everyone, I'm back. I just have my base makeup on, finally working on an eyeshadow palette in the traditional format, and I'm going to be using the All Done Up palette. I'm just not really in a colorful mood right now. I'm so exhausted, so I think it'll be easier for me to work with this neutral palette first. And I'm for the first look, I'm going to just start with doing something really light and easy. I just got a lash lift, so I really want to just use some mascara and just kind of elevate my lashes today. But for the subsequent looks, I will do something a little bit more intense. And yeah, I have used a couple of mattes in this palette already just off camera for like other random looks when I needed a matte and I just grabbed this off the shelf. So I haven't not used this palette yet, but I also haven't really gotten a good use out of this palette yet. And I'm especially interested in seeing if the shimmer formula has changed because I know her shimmer formula has come a long way. I wasn't really the biggest fan of it in Surge, I'll be honest. So I'm hoping that this one is even better. It was pretty good in Dollhouse, but I know she's always working on making it just better and better and better. I really want to do something that focuses on this shimmer shade Wink down here. So I'm just going to do something really easy and quick. I'm probably not going to use too much contrast, none of, not any of the like super dark shades, maybe like a shadow liner so i'm going to start off with the shade close up right here this is probably going to barely show up on me but i have found in my experience that even her lightest mattes do to some degree still kind of show up and it's good to just kind of add as a base i'm using unset primer i also use some setting spray to kind of make my skin a little bit less dry so my eyelids are also tacky from that so you can see it really matches my blush be cute for like a monochrome pink look i'm not taking it all the way down to my lash line though since i am going to be putting down wink later so i'm just putting this kind of above where wink will be and i'm leaving behind empty space so that wink has still will have something to grab onto later since this is kind of another one of her interpretations of a neutral palette i really want to do multiple different neutral looks some that are like really dramatic and some that are really simple so that you can kind of see a range of looks with this i know whenever i'm using more colorful palettes my looks do get more elaborate because that's generally what most people are going to be getting colorful palettes for but whenever i'm using a more neutral palette i'll try and make at least one of the looks be a little bit more simple and easy to replicate because presumably you'd be using it for that and then i'm going to take this sh that same shade on the I'm gonna actually as you can see I'm gonna start it all the way down here because I'm gonna have the look really blend into my blush whenever I do looks that are lighter I really like to take advantage of this as an opportunity to really blow out the lower lash line and it can create a really pretty kind of blushing eye effect basically I'm like this shade is so close in tone to the blush I have on right now that I can kind of blend this eyeshadow into my blush and it just looks like I brought my blush to my eyes Oh yeah, not bad. The shade is not feeling super squishy, which is really great. It's a little bit more hard pressed than I was expecting, which I think is a good thing because that means it's not going to be oily or creasy, which I know we've been seeing that- Oh, careful, you might pick up a flake. Which I know we've been seeing shades like that a lot lately where they're so foiled, but they also have um, a lot of moisture to them. It's so pretty. It's a lot lighter than I expected because the reflect is so strong. It does kind of look more like just like a straight up highlight. On the finger, it is still very smooth. So I'm gonna- So now you can see on this eye, it looks a lot more foiled and smooth, whereas on this eye it looks a little more glittery. I'm glad to see that this shade is so versatile. Since my fingernails aren't too terribly long yet, I'm just gonna use my finger on this eye for brevity. And you can see there's still a lot left hanging onto my finger there, but it transfers to my eyelid very nicely. I was hoping that there'd be a rosy or neutral in this row, but I'm just gonna go straight into this, but I'll just use it very lightly. It's a more red tone neutral, that should help. Just like a super light tap into the pan. You see how it's subtle, but it still makes kind of a difference. And then I'll just take what's left and put it right up here as if I'm sweeping through a crease I do not have, but very, very subtle. We're just trying to keep the look light and airy today. So I'm using the shade Ready, but I'm not using it at max opacity at all. And you can really see how these, how her matte formula is really easy to blend out, which means it's very easy to apply a light layer of. I'm going to take the shade Ready again, but this time I'm going to use it as eyeliner. So now I'm going to use it at pretty much max opacity, so now it's going to look a lot more different. I do like shadow liner sometimes because you can go a lot thicker than a liquid eyeliner without looking super, super harsh. And especially if you have monolids where the eyeliner has to be like a meter thick before you see it. So I'm just going to wing it out the way that I like to. I'm going to take what's left on the brush and see if I can... <laughs> 
do the thing again. I never can manage it, but I'll try it again. I'm just using what's left on the brush this time. I don't know, does that look okay? I'm gonna go into close up, that first shade I used earlier, just to blend this out. That's not too bad. I think it's my, it's a better attempt than what I've done in the past. I feel like my wing angles never match. Mostly just because my eyes are two different sizes. If you have mono lids, it really honestly is just a ton of trial and error to find out your favorite and also most flattering eyeliner shapes. So I'm going to take wink on my lower lash line and then I will do some mascara and then I will wrap up my face and then we will be done. On a much firmer, stiffer brush like this with a little bit of thickness to it, you can see it picks up really well. And now my lower lash line is a little bit more matte feeling just because I put all this eyeshadow on there. But as you can see, it still sticks really, really well. And then I'm gonna take more close up, really make sure it's, un it's visible. It's almost like I'm using this color to contour underneath my eye bag, but I don't actually do contour. I haven't mastered it yet. It's either that or it just isn't for me, but I kind of use eyeshadow to achieve a similar effect. Now, the only thing I'm missing is gonna be an inner corner highlight, and I don't really wanna use the same shade as I used for that. So because this is so much more foiled and it kind of emphasizes my eyelid texture a little bit because of how foiled it is, and it's also a little bit more sparkly, I'm going to use an inner corner highlight that's really, really smooth. I am going to just go and with Luna from the M Cosmetics um, Dewy Eyeshadow, I think. And I'm just going to put this very, very smooth shadow on my inner corner, and it should be, yeah, there we go. So you can see it's even brighter than what's on my, in, what's on my eyelid. Okay, so I'm gonna call this look complete. Hopefully I was able to edit this down more compact. Sorry, future me. I'll be back in a couple minutes with a full face of makeup. Okay. Here is my finished look. My hair is a mess. <laughs> Everything, all things considered, the Douyin angle turned out pretty good. I think maybe I cut it off too soon. Like it just looks like a dash. There's more, as opposed to having more of a gradation going in. We're onto something. I think this is like, we're, we're hitting a potentially a good thing here. So that's gonna be this look. Really cute and easy. Just like super adorable. I'm gonna go to bed now. <laughs> I'll take some photos and then I'll head to bed. So that'll be this look, so you'll see the second look in a couple seconds. I think what I really want to do today, since I am in kind of a more colorful mood, is I am going to work on the green column. I'm not going to use all the shades in the green column. I will, of course, continue to bounce around. This reminds me of the khaki colorway of the Tom Ford Eye Color Creme Quad, which I only have in Violet Satine. So I think I'm going to use these four shades to create a look and kind of get my khaki fix, almost one could say. I'm going to start off with this shade right here, and I feel like I was just recently using a shade like this on the inner part of my eye, but I'm going to put this on the inner part of my eye. I have on the P. Louise eyeshadow base. Actually, it's a little bit more earthy toned and it's not quite as yellow orange as the Lunar Beauty one. It is definitely darker, more desaturated. So I'm just gonna stick that there. And I, I will, of course, blend into other shades with it later. I still don't feel super comfortable putting eyeshadow in this area of my eyelid because I feel like it just doesn't work with my eye and face shape. But after seeing Nikki tutorials do it, I really, and also just generally wanting to be varied in my eyeshadow structures, not just colors, but the whole structure and shape. I really want to just be more brave and more experimental. Even if the look doesn't turn out, even if my video, the look ends up being kind of shoddy, like I'm now gonna go into Muse right here. In my humble opinion, for example, this shade Muse right here, compare it to when I swatched the khaki quad when I was in Hawaii. And I can tell you that this shade Muse is much more desaturated. It's got a lot more gray to it than any of the shades in the khaki quad from Tom Ford did. And I am gonna be putting some darker shadows closer to my eyelash, I, I, to my lash line. So I am just leaving space so that I can build it up on top of my tacky-ish primer. And I'm gonna kind of make sure I 
blend these two shades together a little bit. I'm just, I'm like barely marrying the two together. I'm not gonna try and push the shades into each other very much at all. So now I'm going to take the soft shader. Um, it's also from the sky set. So I'm going to go into Shapely now, which is much darker. And this shade is definitely reminding me of the khaki quad. It's a, it's a lot less gray. I believe the darkest shade in the khaki quad is somewhat similar to this, but probably not quite as dark as this one is. Like I've noticed that I frequently just get locked into applying it this way when like, I mean, you know, it's, it's a brush. Like, and when I first realized that I was like, wait, hold on. I just blew my own mind. So anyways, I felt really dumb after that. I'm trying to make sure I stay on camera, sorry. I've noticed a lot of other YouTubers I follow, they like are so good at staying still in front of the camera and I'm like, I, I bounce around, I'm, I, I'm hyperactive, so I fidget a lot. If you hear sounds, Matcha is chewing up my cardboard box that holds my latest releases that I was going to remember to use. Which, that, that's a thing she does. So as you can see, I've put it right here and because I'm putting it on a tackier base, you can see I'm not quite getting an achieve achieving like a super even blend, but I don't really care about that right now. I'm caring right now about just carefully being able to pack the shadow where I want it. Yeah, you can see how well it picks up on the brush. And then as I lay it down, it, it, you just kind of carefully press it down against your eyelid and I really don't get fallout. And as you can see, you see how it's not really blending because I'm laying it on top of an unset base, but that's fine because I'm trying to just pack it right now. If you prefer having an easier blend over um, like super opaque shadow, then definitely either use a less tacky base. Like I, my favorite less tacky base is the Rare Beauty Primer, or you can just go ahead and set your base. So you can see that I've managed to lay down a pretty good layer. It's definitely getting really smoky, which I really like. Now I'm gonna just flip to the other side of the brush and I'm definitely gonna wanna make sure I wash this thing tonight. And I'm going to go into doe-eyed and this is gonna go in the empty spot that I have conveniently left behind for myself. And as you can see, this is an extremely dark brown and it is warm. It is a warmer toned brown. So it's in the same column as the first shade I laid down earlier. And again, I did kind of feel like there was a shade in the khaki quad that was a little bit more on the brown side. It was not as dark as this and it was even more obviously warmer, like the yellow undertone was much more obvious. And it does blend into the dark green pretty nicely. Again, all of this will be gone over again later. <laughs> Yeah, that looks good. It's, it's a little bit rough for sure, but it'll get better. And then I'm just going to take the extra product and go even closer to my lower lash line. Okay, so now it's going to be blending time. So this is the time where we want to really make sure we blend our hearts out. So I'm going to switch to a rougher 14 and I'm going to take unexpected yellow and I'm just going to start laying down that on top of the earthy tone shade and this is when you just go crazy <laughs> now there is a shimmer that's going to get laid on top of all of this later so i don't need to be it doesn't need to be perfect but we do kind of want to make sure we just smooth it out a little bit and then i'm just going to do the same thing with muse and i'm just going to use the same brush Now I am being very careful to make sure that I'm not over blending all these shades together or else I'm going to make the look turn a little bit muddy. I'm going to go into a more pointed brush. This is the Wayne Goss 19. I actually think it's quite scratchy honestly and I'm going to use the two pastel shades up here and I'm going to use those to further blend out the very top of the look because the top of the look needs a little bit of help. Oh yeah, these are lovely pastel shades. I need to like create a pastel look using all the pastels scattered across my palettes. Because now that I have these Blend Bunny palettes, I feel like I have access to some pastel shades that I otherwise just either didn't have or didn't have in good formulas. And sometimes I use my finger if I feel like I blew the look out too far. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back into the darker shades, but again, I'm using a fluffy brush and I'm just going to basically continue to perfect the blend and then I'm going to go back into doe-eyed which is that dark brown 
Okay, so I think that's pretty good. Considering that I'm about to use shimmers, it doesn't need to be completely flawless. So I am going to go into Starlet, which is over here. Seems like this will be really pretty, and I am going to use my finger. Her shimmers are not squishy by any means, but they do have some creaminess to them that makes them work really well with a the finger. They're not so squishy and oily and emollient that they don't work with a brush or that they break up eyeshadow or act super strange, so I do think her shimmer formula has come a long way. And I'm not gonna apply it as an opaque shimmer, so that way the darkness can shine through. It's almost like I'm giving this shimmer a dark base. And then right in the center, I'll keep tapping to increase the opacity. And you see how I'm able to kind of make that shimmer still preserve the darkness of the sh shades I laid down? So I got plenty of product, so I'm just gonna use the same finger on the other eye. And again, I focus it in the center, and then I'm gonna kind of disperse it. And then I also am gonna bring it all the way up, and then I'll just put the rest right on the middle. And that is gonna be that shimmer laid down. I love it so much, it looks so good. And now I'm going to put that on the middle of the lash line. And I'm not really doing like an ego sal moment with this shade because, um, like kind of, but not really. I really like this. This is definitely a gold shade with a lot of nuance to it. Okay, so that is this look now with the shimmer added and it looks amazing. So the last thing I need is to take an act like a inner corner thing. This shade to me appears to have, it's white, but it appears to have a green reflect. Ooh, this feels really hard pressed. Got a little bit of sparkly bits on my face. Put some over there. A little goes a long way. And now I'm just gonna start spreading it. And I really like it when it kind of goes up and over. I'm just using tapping motions to disperse the pigments. Yeah, I felt with this shade, I had to kind of like use my brush to kind of scratch off a top layer. And now it's like, it is still really dry and hard, more hard pressed because it's like individual sparkle effects as opposed to it being foiled. And yeah, I think you can see now what I was talking about with the green reflect. So that's going to be this look more or less completed. I think it's really pretty. I probably could have pulled the dark out further, but I don't know. I didn't really want to. So this is going to be officially it done. Of course, without the glitter on top, it looked fine. Like this is absolutely insane how gorgeous it was. And for having so many dark shades being worked into this, I personally still felt like I had a really easy time working with these shadows. So yeah, I'm gonna finish off my makeup off camera and I will be back to discuss the finished look. Okay, so this is going to be my finished look. It definitely was a lot of fun to pull together. I wasn't really feeling super inspired when I sat down to start filming, but now at the end of it all, I just really like how everything turned out. I had a lot of fun. I just realized I forgot to use setting powder again. My face should look a little bit more mattified and smoothed out. Now this is going to be a finished look. I didn't blow up my eyeshadow super far this time, which I guess I could have, but I just wasn't feeling like it, so. And then I have the Huda Beauty Legit Lashes Mascara, which I think is like my favorite lower lash mascara of all time, the volumizing side, which is the only side I use. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this look. I'll we'll move on to the next one. So I did want to say that the other look that I did previously with all of that green shade Starlet, after about four hours, it had creased on me pretty significantly. Now I used the P. Louise base, so today I'm using this NARS smudge proof base, see if we can get different results. I'm going to start off with the look and I'm just going to do like a simple grayscale smoky eye. So it's not really going to be all that groundbreaking in terms of like layout, I don't think anyways. I may use the black to try and do something. I'm thinking I don't usually go for like full grayscale looks often. Sorry if I like keep bouncing off camera. I'm gonna take Smokin', which is that straight black right here. And I'm going to start, yeah, I'll, I'll try something. Kind of thinking that should do it. I don't want it to be like ultra precise because I do, you know, I, I'm, I, it's like I'm using eyeshadow. I don't need it to be super precise, but I do want to make sure it's kind of sort of blended. Kind of create a gradient. This 
black is not quite as like ultra pigmented as other blacks that she's done in her palettes before. I wouldn't be surprised if that was deliberate because she at this point does have a black in a lot of her palettes. And it's good, I think, to have blacks of different kinds of qualities. Yeah, it's... I wonder if it's meant to be more charcoal anyways. Because it's not quite black and it's like actually quite elegant looking that way. Yeah, so you see how I'm kind of keeping the top clean, but I want the bottom to be more blended. And then I'm just gonna continue it down. Yeah, I actually really like how that looks. So hopefully I didn't blow the gray out too far for on that side of my eye, we'll see. So now comes the tricky part, is just replicating this on the other eye. Okay, so now I'm just gonna switch to all of my smaller brushes and start cleaning this stuff up. It's a little bit less curved than this side, but that'll be fine. I don't want to like try and I don't want to make it go too crazy. Okay, I wiped the black off of the flat brush I've been using because I need to use it to apply the gray. Just kind of in a similar way that I've been applying it, using it to clean up the top. I feel like this left eye is not quite as black as the other eye. Okay, so that's gonna be the base shadows laid down. It's a pretty clean look, I do appreciate it. So next I'm going to take another brush and I'm gonna go in to the white and I'm going to, it's called Knockout. It doesn't appear to be a true, true white. It's like a very slight off white. I'm gonna use this on the inner corner. I don't usually do a matte inner corner highlight, but I'll do it for this look. I do appreciate that this is actually a pretty pigmented white color. Okay, so now I'm going to use the silver, definitely one of the star shades in this palette. I've already used this off camera to when I was just doing a quick like going out errands look. I used this on my lower lash line and I absolutely loved how it looked, so I'm going to do that again. This picks up very easily on a brush and can go everywhere really quickly. I kind of want to try and keep it within the bounds of the black line I drew earlier. So I know that this is technically supposed to be a bent liner brush from the Pusheen collection, but I'm going to use it to apply this shadow in a way that's like super precise. I actually appreciate how the bent angle, I like, feel like it's easier for me to position it. Because the handle is not in the way I can see what I'm doing. Do kind of want to do something above that as well. I am going to go back into the black. I just want to make sure that black line on the lower lash line is nice and defined. Instead of using the silver again, I'm going to go into Wink, which I think is one of my favorite shimmer shades in this palette so far. Just like a little bit of like some sparkle. And I guess I'll just add like a touch of silver to that as well. So I'm just gonna continue to use a mix of Wink and Accentuate. I'm really like having no concerns about being harsh with dragging the bristles back and forth because I want to make sure that the sparklies are kind of dispersed so that it really gives off a glittering effect. I think that's going to go ahead and wrap up this look. I really like how it turned out. Definitely like not really something I usually do very often, but I am having fun experimenting with these kinds of looks these days. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off my makeup and then I'll be right back. Okay, this is going to be my finished look. As you can see, I went pretty light on the cheeks. I used a very, very lavender blush, always on the hunt for the perfect one, but this is the Flower Nose Lavender Blush I used today. I decided to use a really, really dark lip to just pull everything together, so I'm using the Kaleidos Lip Clay in Dahlia. Mm -hmm. It is a very blue-based red, as you can see. That's gonna be this look. I absolutely love how it turned out. Definitely not something I go for very often, but as you can see, I'm definitely trying to experiment more with eyeshadow this year. For the last look, I will focus on that last column and any other shades that I missed. And from there, I think we'll just call it done. I'm gonna move on to the fourth look now, which I'll work on tomorrow. You'll see that in a couple seconds.
Okay, I am back to do the fourth and final look. As of right now, the only shades I really haven't like truly, truly dug into are gonna is gonna be this warmer column right here. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do a nice kind of rusty themed makeup look and that should wrap up this palette. We'll just go ahead and start. So I'm gonna take Ready, which is the darkest shade and I'm just going to start creating the shape I want the eyeshadow to take on. The shade definitely, when you look in the pan, it has a distinctly redder undertone. On the eye, it is so dark that it kind of reads more like a neutral brown, but as I blend it out, you can see the red undertone peeking through. So I'm just gonna slowly wing that out. And as you can see, I'm able to manipulate this very dark shadow and turn it into something quite light. I do always like that about this formula. Yeah, I think that's kind of where I want things to be. And then I'm just gonna take a smaller brush and I'm gonna take that on the lower lash line as well. Also, my complexion does not look the greatest today. I'm testing out a new foundation and my first impression of it is not good. I am very surprised at how bad it looks on me. And I will blend it out later, plus putting a shimmer on top. So any rough blending that you see that I'm leaving behind, it'll be fine. So that's gonna be the foundational shape that I'll be sticking with. I'm gonna go right ahead and kind of go straight into centerfold. Now, personally, I noticed that these shimmers seem to have a tendency to crease on me, which really, really sucks. Now, when I used the P. Louise Eye Base, it was way worse. And then I used the NARS Smudge Proof Base um, and it wasn't as bad, but I definitely think that these kind of are following that very popular indie formula of having a lot of like oils and moisture and squishiness in the shimmers. It's not as squishy as some other indie formulas I've tried, which are even more like offensive. But I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the shade down. I feel like this might've looked better if I had put a darker base down first, but that's okay. But yeah, you can see how it's so thick on my finger. Now it doesn't feel thick on my eyelid. Like as I'm putting it down, I don't feel like I'm putting down all this thick pigment. Like it doesn't feel heavy or cakey on my eyelid. I'm just gonna go straight in with my finger on the other eye. Yeah, you can see it definitely lays down really pretty and there's definitely still a significant amount left on my finger. So it's, it's, an, it's an intense shade. And I do feel like when we're talking indie shades versus higher end mainstream shadows, I feel like wear time is really where I find my higher end shadows, like especially Natasha Denona still performs better. Like even if the indie shadow has more impact and it looks better on camera, it's not gonna wear as well as my Natasha Denona shimmers do. Okay, so I am now going to go into pouty. I'm gonna use pouty. I'm gonna like layer it on top of the shimmer, which I know sometimes doesn't work, but I'm just gonna use it. I'm gonna use it like right here. I like it when I'm able to do this. If I'm not able to do it, it's a little bit frustrating. I like having the freedom to go between finishes if I want to. And as you can see, I am able to, to some degree, layer it pretty nicely over it, which is pretty cool. And I'm just gonna use it to inject some warmth into the look overall. This is a very warm brown. And you can see that it's definitely making a difference. And I will add a shade on top of all of this to blend it out. There's a nice range of like kind of more pastel toned neutrals on the top row of this palette. And I am also going to take pouty and kind of use it to almost like do like an ego style contour. But it's still like obviously eyeshadow. I'm going to take a fluffier brush and I'm going to go into close up, which is that neutral peachy shade. And that's going to go on top of everything. And this is gonna just blend out everything. And that really just kind of smooths everything out. I'm gonna go using the same small brush I used for pouty. I'm gonna go back into ready and I really am gonna just build the depth up back to where I want it. Now 
All right, and the last thing is gonna be that inner corner highlight, and there's not really a true inner corner highlight shade, so I'm just gonna go and use Wink. And I'm just using it on the same brush where I used Centerfold, so the two shades will kind of mix together. Wink is more of a pinky tone shade, but if you use it kind of less intensely, then it just turns into a very bright inner corner highlight shade like that. And I'll just take a little bit kind of on top of everything here. Yeah, you see, it's so reflective, you honestly barely can tell that it's pink. Okay, so that was this look really quick and easy, and then I'll be right back. Well, and, and my makeup too. Okay, so this is gonna be my finished look. I absolutely love how this look turned out. Definitely just a classic warm toned smoky eye with a lot of shimmer. And I also did run a brown eyeliner through the outer half of my lower waterline to really just kind of make sure that my waterline wasn't distracting from how deep the look is. I hope you guys enjoyed this look. I do really love how all of the looks in this video turned out. As I mentioned before, while putting on the eyeshadow, my only real disappointment with this palette is going to be the wear time of the shimmers. I feel like they are really high maintenance, and if I just use something like P. Louise Eye Base or Rare Beauty, which is like, and I just don't really do much else, or even even if my eyelids are like over moisturized, then the wear time drops significantly and the creasing can actually get pretty bad. And I don't have like an actual crease, like I don't have hooded eyes. I don't even have like an actual fold and I get creasing. So I feel like that means if you have literally any other much more common eye shape, then you might be in for a bad time. I wonder how it would wear with glitter glue, but I have heard that people with hooded eyes have problems with glitter glue creasing even more since it makes the eyeshadow layer on even thicker. Um, I did try it with the NARS Smudge Proof Eye Base and I feel like that was much better. And if I apply the shadow more sheer, like as if I'm applying it more like a topper as opposed to a foiled and pigmented layer, then it doesn't really crease as bad because obviously I have less product down. But if I want to get that full foiled effect and I want the pigmentation to be opaque, then I'm compromising wear time. And I do feel like that is one thing with Blend Bunny that kind of is like the worst part of the brand for me. By all means, I feel like that is not really the biggest deal ever because the mattes are honestly so, 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 so good. And for how many shades you're getting, I've not really ever found the price to be like too much for me. So even with the shimmers not wearing the best, I still am really happy that I own the palettes from Blend Bunny that I do, and I do really like them, but I feel like as she starts to put more and more shimmers into her palettes, um, I know she's continually working on improving the formula, so hopefully over time things get better, um, but if she ever continues to do more and more and more shimmers, I will eventually kind of start to be like, okay, but if the wear time's not that great, then it's gonna become less and less and less worth it. So right now with just one row at the bottom as she's been doing, it's not too bad. I am gonna be filming with Lore sometime after this, and I am gonna test Lore's shimmers and see if anything changed between all done up in lore. Her matte formula is truly one of the best that I've ever stumbled across, period, in terms of just how easy it is to use. And I really feel like that makes everything she releases worth it, even if the shimmers are not quite up to par. Just the mattes are so easy, so accessible, and just I feel like they do exactly what you want. You put them exactly where you want, and they do exactly what you want. And I think that'll be it for me, honestly. That'll be my verdict. Now, just wrapping up this look really quick, the blush I used, the Patrick Ta Mono, um, Monochrome Moment Blush in She's Sincere. I got this recently. I'm, I'm like, I was kind of trying to complete my Monochrome Moment collection since they're being discontinued. I think they might be already gone. This is She's Sincere. It's the peach one. Really, really pretty. A little bit more bronze than I usually prefer, but for a look like this, it's just like spot on perfect. So, and then I also used two highlighters. I'm continuing to test out this M Cosmetics Highlighter in Clarity. I don't like it. It just looks so dry and textured. Um, so then I went over it and I also put it on my nose, the Pat McGrath Highlighter in Lunar Allure, which is like 10 times better. So I did really like that. And then after lining my lips, I used the Roman Zero Velvet Tint in Witty. Total throwback. But as you can see, it is a really nice orange toned warm red, nice and matte. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this four looks using Blend Bunny all done up. I feel like I definitely was able to go all out and create a really nice range of really beautiful looks with this palette and I definitely really really had fun with that so I hope you guys found this to be helpful if you have any more questions about Blend Bunny do feel free to ask and I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye